Joe, we get to our power rankings, and every single week that we do these, I continuously say these are not rankings. These are ratings, where we think teams are based off of what we've seen and, and the things that we do behind the scenes on our power rankings, one through ten, and we do these every week. There's always some early shakeups in these, um, and for me, I had the biggest shakeup, and we'll see why. I, Texas is going to be up in the top three for me after the performance that they had last week. But I'm going to kick it over to you first. Who is in your top 10 this week in your power rankings going into week three? Number one, I've got Georgia, of course. Number two, Ohio State still. Number three, Texas. Number four, Miami. Number five, Tennessee. Number six, USC. Number seven, Alabama. Eight, Ole Miss. Nine, Penn State. And 10, Oregon. Quick, Just a quick thought. Uh, for anyone who was pissy that I didn't have Tennessee or I had Tennessee in the top 10 over Alabama, we had some really, really good proof for how good they are against NC State. A lot State. of the pushback last week on us about that. Yeah. And well, Alabama's in there now, and I think that Alabama's going to get their chance to like really make a statement like we talked about in the preview, but you can't not have Tennessee in the top five. Anybody should have Tennessee in the top five. They are a really, really good team this year. So I'll give you mine here, and then we'll, we'll we'll debate and discuss on this. Yeah, my top ten as it as it stands: Georgia number one, Texas number two, Ohio State number three, Tennessee, like you just mentioned, for me is at number four, number five, Miami, number six, Alabama, number seven, Ole Miss, number eight, Penn State, number nine, USC, and wrapping out my top ten, Joe, I have Missouri going in there. I'll kick it off with you. Is there anything on our on my top ten that you did not like or disagree with? I find funny. Um, Here we go. A lot of a lot of Texas fans uh, hate you specifically. You specifically, they really don't like you when you talk about Texas. The comments are pretty funny because they're just like Blake's not giving us a chance, and they're it's just always going to be negative. And here you are ranking them at two higher than I have them. I understand. The argument for why the way that they played against Michigan, why they would deserve to be at number two and why they could pass Ohio State, I'm just not ready to make that swap completely yet. I think it's a 1A, 1, or not a 1A, 1B, a 2A, 2B between Texas and Ohio State for me. But I've just got like a little bit more hope in Ohio State. And I think that just because Ohio State hasn't played anybody, we shouldn't start moving them down. Well, I, I think and when you go into power rankings, when you play an opponent like they did and you beat them the way that you did and you were dominant as you were, that's what made me – excuse me. That's what made me put them there, okay? Because, look, they did look dominant. Now, I do think that Texas has an issue potentially in the running game. I'm right. not going to get to that deep here. But, look, man, they went on the road, a hostile environment, and they were, they were the better team. They were the more physical team from start to finish. You know, Joe, here's the thing that I, I, I will say. I do think that they were uh, better in the run game defensively than I thought that they were going to be. And look, man, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Ohio State in game one looked a little bit sluggish. They haven't played anybody. And look, man, I, I think that teams in power rankings are going to get rewarded when you go on the road and do what you did against Michigan. And you're right. They do hate me. I, but they, what do they hate me on? They hate me on because you didn't have a running back that went over three yards per carry. Like, they were in our comments saying, we dominated in the running game. Oh, really? You didn't have a running back that went over three yards a carry or, or, or around three yards a carry. And they hate me because of what I said last year. And mm -hmm. they think that their secondary is fixed because they went up against Davis Warren in this Michigan passing attack. That does not uh, That's not a great indication – or, or, or what you should look at, like, okay, you do that against Georgia, all right, then we have some conversations that we got to have. But there are a lot of questions that Texas got to face, but in saying all that, I think them going on the road and doing what they did to Michigan was, I mean, Joe, let's call it what it is, man. It was incredibly they, impressive. They, incredibly they, impressive. They, they, at the very least, they're a top three team. To do that on the road, in the big house – to pick up the splash plays that they had, to have the the big just defensive stops where Warren could not produce anything. That's the main takeaway. If you have them at two or three, there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. One's a little too aggressive for me because we can't just forget the game that Georgia put on tape against a pretty quality Clemson team. Let me, uh, all right, let me ask you this. What was the better yeah. win, Georgia versus Clemson or Texas over Michigan? I mean... 
I mean, for me, it's right, cool. right. Clemson. I, I'll, I'll tell you my thought. I'll say slightly Texas versus Michigan because, understandably, this Michigan team is not the same team that just won a national title, but that's still a team that won a national title last year. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, the Clemson game was impressive, though, because it was just a whoop-ass from start to finish. Both were, but I, I can't. Right. I know what Georgia is. My opinions on them haven't changed. I would need to see them really, really s slip up and make a mistake and not play well uh, for a couple of weeks for me to move them down. Well, here's the thing about this that I look at. Joe, I went, uh, a lot of people, let me say it like this. A lot of people thought that App State could be one of those G5 teams that's playoff bound. Right, that that that's in the mix of this, and I I, I gotta I gotta give Clemson this, brother. I, I, they put a pat, patty smacking on App State, and, and look, the let me say it like this: I'm, I'm God, I always give these comparisons about Notre Dame, and I'm not, I really am not trying to do this. But remember the last time that Notre Dame got in the playoffs? That was a really good football team with Ian Book mm -hmm. and all those dudes. Yeah. What did Clemson do? Okay, Clemson held them at bay, but but if you go back and watch that game, even though it was a beating, Notre Dame wasn't out completely outclassed in that game. They were a really good football team. And I think for me, watching Clemson last week versus Georgia, or, or watching Clemson last week versus App State, I'm like, man, all right now, Georgia might be the team that we have been project projecting them to be all along, so yeah. I would lean them if I had to do it. Let me throw this your way. Um, you got USC at six. I know that I have them at eight here or nine here. You're putting USC above a lot of pe a lot of teams. And where I agree with you, like defensively, man, it seems like they've really figured some things out. Why do you have USC at six? Well, the LSU win was impressive enough to move them into the top 10 and then a bit of a slow week from Penn State. And then obviously Notre Dame's just completely removed from the conversation. You're dropping some teams. Back to back weeks where USC has been impressive. I know that they went up against a G5 opponent, but it feels like they're starting to build this trajectory of being a really dominant team this year. You know, they're not just really explosive on offense and able to create some seriously momentous plays with all these weapons that they have, but I really think that that defense is vastly, vastly improved. I got to give them credit for the way that they're continuing to improve. Um, Number six doesn't feel too crazy to me. I, I think that, that that is kind of where they're going to land and stick for a while because their schedule is moderately light for a stretch. And if they get another ranked win, we could be having a conversation about moving them up. The only reason I got USC at nine and behind a lot of those teams, I think on a neutral field, USC's not favored versus Penn State, Ole Miss, Bama, Miami, like any of them. I think we're going to see how good USC is in these next couple of weeks, this next month. I agree with you, man. I think, you know, DeAnton Lynn has done some really good things with them defensively. You know, going back and watching that LSU game as much as I have, I, I mean, look, man, they schematically, like I told you in leading up to that LSU game, I I always felt like in during the offseason, they had personnel. They just didn't have a lot of scheme behind it. Um, and, and look, man, they shut out Utah State last week, and I know it's like, whoa, boy, it's Utah State. Joe, Lincoln Riley hasn't shut out anybody ever, okay? And last week they came in focused, locked in, ready to roll, and put a beat down on a team. And look, Miller Moss, Joe, I, I think that, man, he's just playing inside the system, and it's benefiting them, okay? Doing and playing inside the system has benefited them. It's going to be interesting to see – how they continue to progress. What else do you have in our, our power rankings here? What else did you that stood out to you? Uh, outside of that, I think we're we're pretty much on the the same exact page here. I thought I don't the have, first thing that you were going to tag me on was Missouri at ten and not having Oregon. No, I I don't hate this, and I mean I guess let's wrap wrap this with with that thought. Um, Missouri's 11 for me. It's kind of like the Alabama case last year. Like Missouri's right there. How they play against Boston College, I think is going to bump them up. I'm not ready to give up on Oregon. That's that's my whole argument. I am not ready to completely bail on Oregon because they're just playing rusty. I keep coming back to that. I really think that eventually they're going to hit their stride, and it helps that they have a rivalry game against a team that I think that they're significantly better than. When you're playing a rival and you want to smoke them and you want to completely put them into the dirt – 
you're going to show up for that game and a lot of the issues you had the previous two weeks are going to possibly get ironed out during practice because you're just so locked in and focused. So after mm -hmm. this week, I feel like Oregon's going to re-solidify themselves as one of the better teams. Top five is out of the question, though. That's that's way too high for them. So here's what I'll say. I said this week in our preview that I have them on upset alert watch. and But you'll see in picks in just a moment mm -hmm. that I picked – Oregon to beat Oregon State. Joey, what, what worries me, okay, is that they faced two teams out of Idaho. And quite honestly, there were moments where they got pushed around. And I don't feel like that's rusty, right? Like, I mean, and, and see, here's the thing that I, I keep mm -hmm. coming back to is, after you're in a, in a dogfight versus Idaho, no, Utah, and then you're in a dogfight versus boys, you say that you got to kick a field goal to win the game. I'm starting to ask the question, like, what did both of those teams do at some moderately really good level? They didn't hold do on, anything. They didn't. No, they ran the football at a pretty high they level. Didn't, they didn't do anything special to to play Oregon that close. Nevertheless, I, could I'm you the, hear the uh, wait? Could you hear the TV? Uh, uh, uh okay, okay. Uh, I -uh, couldn't hear the TV. Okay. Um, he, here's what I here's how I'll end it with what what I look at Missouri versus Oregon, which is the debate that I'm having here. I get that Missouri hasn't played anybody, but Joe, you know what they've done the last two weeks? They've locked in and they've dominated from every for, in every fast. And that's just that's just the thing. I mean, again, we talk about this. I think Eli has gotten his team to buy in where Dan Lanning has not, and I think that that is that is the that's a separating factor for me. And look, Missouri's got a really interesting game this week versus Boston College, and I think these things will play themselves out here. Yeah, no, it's certainly possible. I think we might have a might revisit this, and I'm probably going to have Missouri ahead of ahead of Oregon, depending on how these two teams play. Well, I mean, if Missouri beats a ranked opponent, I mean, hey, dude, well, let me ask you this. Let me uh, before we wrap this up, let me ask you this question because we're all just assuming that Boise uh, that Missouri is going to beat uh, uh, Boston College. Mm -hmm. Is Boston College in your top ten if they go on the road and beat Florida State yes, and then they go on yes, the road and beat? Yes, without a question, I, I would actually topped. I'd move them up to 12. I'm not going to go up to top 10, but I would move them up to 12. I mean, that is a fantastic resume if they pulled that out. I, I don't think that they're going to beat them, though. I think they're going to cover. It's a 17-point spread. I really think that there's a shot that they cover. Just going to throw this out there. I continue to say it. The uh, one of the favor I'm already starting to get ready for it. Next week, Missouri, Vandy. This video is sponsored by the Online Fitness Training Camp presented by Chris Gates Fitness. When I first started talking about Chris, about partnering with our show, not only was I excited to have a fitness sponsor for our pod, but more importantly, when I found out about how he can help people achieve their goals, I was even more bought in because when the football season starts, it is so tough to stay on top of things and also to be able to enjoy yourself on Saturdays when it's game day. With Chris Gates Fitness's online training camp, you're going to be able to effectively stay focused, consistent, burn fat, build muscle, and do it with a like-minded community of individuals working towards the same thing. On top of this, you're going to be able to get direct coaching from Chris and the ability to ask him questions with an access to a live Q&A where you can get direct personalized support from Chris himself. Don't wait any longer. If you're trying to get in shape during this fall and you want to be able to do it with the right support system, head on over to chrisgatesfitness.com slash training camp or click the link in the description and you need to do it today because you can get the first month, personal training is expensive folks, the first month for only $10 when you use that code Rafino Joe. Don't wait any longer. Head on over there. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit that is a 50 percent welcome bonus bet online where the game starts